Earlier this week, I told you about a father who took his children to the 4th of July parade in Highland Park, Illinois. A father who grabbed his child and put them in a dumpster to save them when a mass shooter began firing on that parade. Horrific stuff. Now we're learning about Aidan McCarthy, a two-year-old, found alone on the parade route. Why? Because his parents, Kevin and Irina McCarthy, were killed by that mass shooter. He's an orphan now. Stories like this are horrific to all of us. As a father, as a human being, my heart is broken for Aidan, for the McCarthy family. But what's worse is to see the reactions of Republican politicians when stuff like this happens. We're overwhelmed by GOP extremism. Every day brings a new crop of ghastly statements, bold-faced lies, and bonkers offensive conspiracies from Republican officials and candidates. It's difficult not to become numb to them. It's tempting to just ignore them. But this is the political party that could be in control of Congress in a matter of months. So, though I would much rather avoid it, and I hate talking about her, we have to start today with GOP Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, speaking in a clip from her podcast about that mass murder in Highland Park, a clip that went viral on Twitter this week. Here's what I have to say. I mean... Two shootings on July 4th, one in a rich white neighborhood and the other at a fireworks display. It almost sounds like it's designed to persuade Republicans to go along with more gun control. I mean, after all, remember, we didn't see that happen at all the pride parades in the month of June. But as soon as we hit MAGA month, as soon as we hit the month that we're all celebrating, loving our country, we have shootings on July 4th. I mean, that's, oh, you know. That would sound like a conspiracy theory, right? Of course. But what's the definition of a right-wing conspiracy theory? Well, by the way, it's the news that's just six months early. That is a sitting member of Congress saying on her own podcast that the Philadelphia and Highland Park shootings on Monday, on Independence Day, the latter of which killed seven people and wounded three dozen more, quote, almost sounds like it's designed to persuade Republicans to go along with more gun control. In other words, a false flag. When a reporter from Atlanta reached out to Green's office to clarify what she meant by the remarks, she took to Twitter to call their report leftist garbage and lies. She shared a private message in which one of her staffers told the reporter that, quote, it's an out-of-context clip from an hour-long podcast on leftist Twitter. Today, the staff of this show... My show went to Greed's Facebook page and watched the 69-minute podcast to get the full context. It's even worse. We just finished up the month of June, which is Pride Month, where there were parades and festivals. But we also saw a lot of things that really children shouldn't see. People, naked people even. Trans strippers dressed like drag queens. But we never saw any of these parades or events get shot up. We never saw mass shootings at these events. But yet, as soon as all the hashtag F the fourth signs and slogans came out and a bunch of cities were saying terrible things about their July 4th celebrations, a bunch of Democrat cities, by the way. Well, what happened on July 4th? A bunch of shootings, terrifying Americans in all different places. But you know what? Who knows? Maybe that's conspiracy theory, too. Why were there no mass shootings at Pride parades? Just at Independence Day celebrations? Never mind that June, Pride Month, also marked the sixth anniversary of the Pulse nightclub shooting that killed 49 people in a gay nightclub in Orlando in the second worst mass shooting in American history. Green did offer her thoughts and prayers to the shooting victims, and she lamented mass shootings in America in that full video. Was the suggestion that Highland Park was a false flag out of context? Not at all. For more context, you can look at her Twitter timeline, where on Tuesday she tweeted this obviously doctored photo of the Highland Park shooting suspect. Quote, people are not stupid. Is he in jail or rehab or a psychiatric center in this photo? That's not his bedroom. 36 minutes after tweeting that nonsense, she posted, quote, supposedly this is photoshopped. Supposedly. Ah, the due diligence of a sitting Republican member of Congress. But not just any 
member of Congress. Marjorie Taylor Greene is among the most extreme Republicans on Capitol Hill and unquestionably one of the Republican Party's most powerful fundraisers, a reputation that she built largely on decrying mass shootings as false flags. This is the woman who, even before she was in office, taped herself harassing Parkland shooting survivor David Hogg on the street. She's lent her support to conspiracy theorists who claim that the Parkland and Sandy Hook school shootings were staged. And in May, she suggested without evidence that the Uvalde school shooter was a cross-dresser and questioned how he bought his guns. So where is Green's boss, House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, in all of this? As of this taping, his office has not responded to a request for comment about this member of his caucus. But it's not just Green or Georgia where we're seeing this lunacy from the right. Case in point, the Republican Senate primary in Arizona, where the front-runner, pro-Trump tech tycoon Blake Masters, faces questions about his old online postings, postings in which he lamented the U.S. entry into World War I and II and approvingly quoted Nazi war criminal Hermann Goering. He also argued that al-Qaeda did not constitute a, quote, substantial threat to Americans. Well, the people who died on 9-11 might disagree. And he cited an old anti-Semitic conspiracy that the Rothschild family helped engineer America's entry into World War I. The Masters campaign responded with a statement calling his, pol calling his postings old news. Who cares, they say, about what he said in 2007? Fair enough. People change. They do. So what's he saying now? Women are not paid less in America than men. It's a, it's a left-wing narrative, this gender pay gap. Um, when you control for the occupations, when you control for people taking time out to, you know, birth children, uh, things are actually pretty equal, and men do the most dangerous jobs. I want women to have equal rights, but we don't need an equal rights amendment. We do have a gun violence problem in this country, and it's gang violence, right? It's, it's gangs, it's people in Chicago and St. Louis uh, shooting each other. Um, very often, you know, black people, frankly, and the Democrats don't want to do anything about that. They just want this open border. This is their policy program. From the Democrats' perspective, they like it. It's good. And I'm bold enough to, to admit the obvious, right, <laughs> which is that they're doing this so that someday they can amnesty these people and make them voters who they expect to vote Democrat. Blaming gun violence on black Americans, paying women less, doubling down on the racist great replacement conspiracy theory espoused by the Buffalo, El Paso and Pittsburgh mass shooters. In any other period in American history, Blake Masters would be unelectable for his old writings and his new policy positions, if you could even call them that. We know Republicans are letting this nonsense flow freely to their base, and we know that Democrats don't want to give these dumpster fires more oxygen. I sympathize. My team and I discussed before the show the pitfalls of platforming the fact-free bile coming from the Marjorie Taylor Greens and the Blake Masterses of this world. But a fire like this can't be allowed to rage unanswered. We cannot accept living in America, in an America where politicians can say mad, offensive, outrageous things about mass shootings without any political consequences, and when the bodies of those innocent American victims aren't even buried yet. We can't. Joining me now is MSNBC political analyst David Jolly, a former Republican congressman who is no longer with the party. Also here is Molly jong Fast, contributing writer at The Atlantic and host of the podcast The New Abnormal. Thank you both for joining me. Molly, how do you solve a problem like Marjorie Taylor Greene? We all know that when you respond to outrageous conspiracy theories, you can actually help normalize them and you lose energy that could be spent articulating a real vision for Americans. But... It's not as if Democrats are doing the vision thing anyways. And Green has this big following. You can't just ignore her either, can you? What we would need, theoretically, is grown-ups in the room, right? Members of the Republican Party who would say, this is not OK. The closest you got to that is Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger. And that's why they stand out. You may not agree with them, but they're saying it's not OK. You know, what Trump did was not OK. The problem is we have a situation where we have Trump has birthed like a million mini Trumps. And so you have people who are using the Trump playbook and who are fundraising off of the sort of basis <clears throat> instincts of GOP, racism and sexism and, and, you know, anti, anti, anti everything. And I think it's a very tough situation. But what you would need theoretically is a grown up in the room. And I just don't see that in the Republican Party. 
No, not at all. And meanwhile, they get more and more outrageous, almost numbing us to this stuff. Part of me was like, should we even cover this story today, let alone lead with it? Part of me was like, no, we can't just be silent, as she suggests seven dead Americans were some conspiracy by the left. David, you were a Republican in the room as the GOP was taken over by Tea Party extremism a decade ago. But even yeah. the Tea Party folks didn't say anything as crazy as Green. As recently as 2016, I would argue, that video of her suggesting a mass shooting was a false flag would be enough to end a political career. And yet, in yeah. 2022, she can get away with it. Yeah, Matty, the comments of Marjorie Taylor Greene, of the Senate candidate in Arizona and others, remind me of, frankly, a very sad awakening I had when I served in Congress, which is the realization that nothing in the Constitution requires judgment or intellect to be qualified to serve in the House yes. of Representatives. Neither is moral clarity, neither is discernment, neither is a, a fundamental commitment to equality and justice. We simply rely on communities to elevate people that should should be emblematic of our national values. And I think that's the greatest concern, is that we've entered into an era where Marjorie Taylor Greene and others actually reflect a slice of American values. And I, I like your comparison to the Tea Party because I think it's very important to look at what happened. You know, coming into 2010, consider myself an establishment Republican at the time. Many of us, and certainly those in leadership, McConnell and others, thought, oh, this Tea Party wave, we can control it. It's not going to be a big deal. Yeah. But ultimately, the Tea Party wave defined the Republican Party. I think that's what's happening with this whack job caucus that's emerging, this anti-democratic caucus that's emerging. It is taking over the party. It is the future of the party, and arguably, it's the present now as well. Molly, talking of the present, amid all this Republican craziness this week, there was this bizarre floor speech against gun control by Republican Congresswoman Debbie Lasko of Arizona. Have a listen. I have five grandchildren. I would do anything, anything to protect my five grandchildren, including, as a last resort, shooting them if I had to, to protect the lives of my grandchildren. Democrat bills that we've heard this week want to take away my right. Uh, Molly, Molly, I was going to say I don't know whether to laugh or cry, but I just laughed as I watched that clip again, so I'm laughing. Look, she clearly misspoke about protecting her grandchildren. She could have said, I meant I would shoot someone to protect them. She could have corrected the record and moved on. But no, not the GOP in 2022. Instead, she tweeted, and I quote, it never ceases to amaze me the lengths gun control zealots will go. They turned my speech about protecting Second Amendment rights and my right to protect my grandchildren from violent criminals into a claim I would harm my own grandchildren. Absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it's on tape. She said she would shoot her grandkids. No one's misquoting her. She should c correct herself. But it's a, I mean, it's a broad a problem here. This is a Republican party that doesn't give a damn about reality. Well, they've moved to post-truth. So they never have to correct themselves because there's no truth, right? They don't care. They'll just say, well, I wasn't saying that. I was saying something else. Even though you can hear on the tape what she's saying, it's this strange sort of post-truth world, but it fits. And remember, with these gun, you know, with the gun issue, they will blame these shootings on anything but guns, right? They'll blame it on mental illness. They have no interest in mental illness. They'll blame it on video games and, I mean, anything they can. And I think that ultimately it's just because they're in this post-truth world where nothing is real and they never have any accountability, so they never have to correct the record. I mean, you almost never see these Republicans correct themselves. Yeah. And, and, David, I was just reminded of what you said a moment ago about McConnell and others thought they could control the Tea Party. I'm sure McConnell thinks he can control all these nutcase candidates who are running in places like Georgia, Herschel Walker, Blake Masters in Arizona. And yet Masters himself, have a listen to what he said uh, in a speech on yeah. Wednesday night at a GOP rally. He told the crowd, we need to fight and win against the left. And he said, listen to this, we need to legislate an affirmative America first agenda. And as far as I can tell, Mitch McConnell doesn't want to do that. So this guy's running to be part of Mitch McConnell's caucus. He's attacking Mitch McConnell. He's funded by Peter Thiel, who we've talked about on this show before in his far right politics. I mean, this is no longer just ha ha, look at these crazies. This is a dangerous trend.
Oh, a a absolutely right. And look, Mitch McConnell not only has lost the narrative of today's GOP, he may not be the next majority leader, even if Republicans take control. Right? Masters may not vote for McConnell. Eric Greitens in Missouri has said he will not vote for McConnell. McConnell and the establishment might, might really be losing control here. And look, if we can examine the GOP and recognize the danger and the crazy within it. But, Mehdi, what I wrestle with is what does it really mean about American culture? Because these individuals are succeeding based on the support of a constituency. And our politics in many ways reflects where our culture is. That is a harder kind of uh, root cause analysis to determine what within our culture is elevating these people to successful positions when it is contrary and antithetical so to true. American values and to American destiny. It's a very good point. Last quick question, Molly. We also learned this week the former FBI director James Comey and his deputy Andrew McKay both declared enemies by Donald Trump. Coincidentally, had their tax returns subjected to rare intensive audits by the Trump run IRS. The New York Times says the odds of either man being picked was a one in 30,000 chance. Uh, our staff calculates that the odds of both be men being picked was about one in 589 million. Uh, can it be that the president, who famously said his taxes were nobody's business, used the IRS to go after his enemies' taxes? can and very likely did. I mean, the guy was sort of bragging about the idea that he might do whatever it took. So I would not be surprised. I mean, again, I haven't seen the dots completely connected yet. And I think it's important always yeah. just to be super careful with this stuff. But certainly I could, I mean, the idea of putting anything past Donald Trump seems like a mistake. I mean, was Donald Trump, the president of the United States, using government agencies to go after his political enemies? To quote Marjorie Taylor Greene, we're just asking questions.